So, yes, uh, uh, good morning. Um, just briefly introducing myself. I'm not a designer, unfortunately, not a fashion creator, but uh, just a lawyer and specializing in intellectual property, but uh, to be at the service of designers and fashion creators and so on. So, let us, uh, how it's work? Uh -huh. Okay, and then, okay. Uh, that is. So uh, let us see uh, a little short panorama for what, uh, how intellectual property may serve the scope for, um, you know, uh, create uh, a value of uh, the creation and uh, also to uh, defend, enforce creation and try to, to make the best of it. So uh, the first thing when you think of a creation, you immediately think of copyright because copyright, everything what is, uh, what can be defined as a creation can be in theoretically protected as a copyright uh, with copyright because copyright does not need to be registered in Italy and in Europe but just uh, raises with the creation so the date of creation of your work of your art craft that is coincident with your copyright so it's very important as a practical end to keep trace of your date of first creation of your work. So for instance, you can go see a notary public, you can also just put on your website a short note and then just telling how you create your art craft to keep trace of the date of your creation. This is very important because when somebody tries to copy you, you need to prove that, that your creation is, uh, is, is come, it was earlier than the mutation one. So this is important. When you, you organize a defile or you, uh, you do something new, you have to keep trace of it. So uh, now today we have many technological mm, you know, tools that help you in keeping trace of it. So, creation, copyright. Then you have design. You have, you have, of course, uh, design. Design can be registered and non-registered. You have, we have European design, which is very much developed, and which uh, provides also non-registered design, which is fundamental for fashion, because uh, that enables the creator to test on the market their art craft and their new creation. So you have one three years period from the first disclosure of your design. When, what does it mean to disclose a design? That means to present it to the public. For instance, in a public defile, or you can publish articles that uh, shall become known to a reasonable uh, uh, community in, the U in Europe. So that is, if it is an international fair, uh, like Premier Vision, uh, you can present your new creation. This is a sort of disclosure. So these give rise to the right. It's the opposite. It's not that you have to register, but just present it to the public, to an informed public. Informed public in within the European Union, within the European community. So this is very important, and it lasts three years. It is very important to know that the period is not very long, but if you see that one, after one year, your creation has had a very big success, then you can register it because you have one period, one year of period of grace to then register your design. So if after one year you have seen a very good success of your design, you can register it, and then it can last 25 years. So it's very important. To know. Oh, sorry, I just go back. Then we have trademark. Trademark is a very fast, important tool. You can have also registered and not registered trademark. In uh, not registered trademark is a very important tool in Italy. And uh, uh, to enjoy protection of a non registered trademark is important to use it and to let it become known to the public. So to uh, also to publish on it, to, to, you know, to show that you are using a sign which is able to distinguish goods from your part, from your firm. Then you have patents. Patents this morning, we have 
uh, we have listened to uh, people speaking of uh, technology of innovation. So patent is the correct tool to protect your innovations. That is, uh, patent shall be um, new and endowed with we, what we call inventive step. That is something which is completely new in the state of the prior art and the common knowledge. So completely new under a technological and scientific point of view. And then you have know-how and trade secrets, a very important, uh, uh, you know, um, U European uh, uh, regulation on trade secrets has been uh, now transposed in many European countries, and it's very, very, it's fundamental, especially in fashion field, because many things cannot be designed, cannot be protected with patent, but uh, they make part of your know-how, your personal know-how. And then a fair competition is a sort of complementary tool to protect your creation when there is no title that you can enforce. Okay, so we, just to make you an example of the different trademarks you can have, you can have word trademark, everybody know about a word trademark. Dior can be a word trademark, can be also a figurative trademark when it comes to the, to the logo. And then you have the famous Cocodrile of Lacoste, which is some, an example of figurative trademark. Then you can have sounds trademark, shape trademark, a particular shape of the goods, and combination of different kind of trademarks. And then you can also have color trademark. And color trademark can be very important in fashion because uh, you are all aware of the Louboutin red sole. This is a particular color and position trademark. Um, now, just an example of how we can enforce uh, particular trademarks in Italy. So this uh, case law uh, refers to the, to the image of Karl Lagerfeld, the famous styler and designer, who also designs for Fendi. And uh, he has, uh, he has uh, protected, uh, uh, as a figurative trademark, uh, uh, the shape of his uh, face, of his image. And it, and it was used by Fendi uh, to put it on bags and accessories. And it has been copied. And so the court of Venice uh, assessed the infringement and prohibited the infringer to continue use, unlawfully using this image. This is very... Uh, particular case, and then it shows the use of a peculiar trademark, innovative trademark, to characterize particular goods and accessories. Another kind of uh, trademark could be considered the shape trademark. What, uh, what does mean a shape trademark? It protects uh, the form on particularities of goods. Uh, for instance, uh, we, we all know the the famous classic bag of Balenciaga, which is composed by different formal features, particular of the, of the sternal bags, and then has been protected by um, trademark, has been enforced, and has been uh, considered protected by the court, and so infringer have been stopped, thanks to the protection of the trademark. Now, another kind of trademark is the particular hook of the Ferragamo, Ferragamo, which is put on bags, which is put on shoes. And also, in this case, the Milan court uh, recognized high protection to this kind of trademark because it's really a distinguishing sign of Ferragamo, of the provenance of goods from Ferragamo, so high quality why the imitator is going uh, back, he wanted to, to take after this particular sign because they want to enjoy the same quality of the same level, luxe, and so on. And it has been stopped by the Milan court. Um, now, you can distinguish, as I say, between trademarks which are more distinctive and less distinctive. Lana Gatto is, was a very old-fashioned trademark in Italy, but very famous over the years, and it's been considered um, endowed of strong distinctive character for Lana Gatto, but more weak concerning the representation of a wool ball, because it's quite descriptive. And then another important uh, innovation in trademark, uh, especially thanks to European Union contribution, is the so-called certification trademark, which is very important in textile because it does not uh, grant the origin of the product, but it is guarantee really the certification of quality of coming from certain materials, so it certifies the quality. It's not only a distinct sign, it's also a sign of quality. And it is, there are some samples there. 
Now, now, very important in fashion are the brands of the styler and of the what we call the creator of fashion. There is a saga on Fiorucci because Fiorucci is a famous, quite famous uh, Italian designer and stylist. In, 19, in the 90s, he decided to sell uh, its company and the brand with, uh, with uh, the company to a um, Japanese company called Edwin. But uh, uh, this uh, did not mean in his uh, uh, brain that he wants to stop uh, his creation and its activity as a designer. So he's, he continues to create and he created another trademark called Love Therapy by Elio Fiorucci. So using his name because he's, he feels that he could continue using his name. So this was a particularly tricky case because there were many, many decisions made in Italy and at the level of the U European Union Court of Justice. The European Union Court of Justice recognized that Fiorucci could continue using his name independently from the fact that he has sold his brand because there was a matter of a honest practice. He said, okay, this is love therapy by Elio Fiorucci, which is different <laughs> from Elio Fiorucci to court. So, the, and also the Court of Justice considered that the average consumer may appreciate the difference. But to the contrary, the Supreme Court in Italy considers the opposite way. It says, no, once that you have sold your trademark, you cannot use another, another time your trademark. So, Love Therapy by Elio Fiorucci and Elio Fiorucci are confusingly similar. So uh, I, I regret, my dear uh, designer, but you cannot continue using by Elio Fiorucci because this is not considered to be honest uh, in, with respect to the, to the honest, uh, you know, custom, customary use of your name. So your name is your name, but you shall not use it in a way which can uh, be, uh, which can cause a confusion in the mind of the consumer, which, can, which is likely to deceive their expectation, okay? Now, we see some <coughs> other example of positioning a uh, trademark, which is very used by Levis on the, on the pocket of the jeans and Adidas, especially there have been, there is a very rich case law on the Adidas free stripes put on shoes which have always been considered distinctive and which have been very well defended at all levels, at a European one and a national one. This is the Louboutin case, what I was referring before. So Louboutin has recently obtained a very important confirmation of the validity of his distinctive sign, which has become a real symbol of fashion, of quality, excellence, by the European Court of Justice this year, this year, last year, sorry, in June 2018, the Court of Justice recognized the full validity of to this kind of trademark, to the, so the color put on the outer part of the sole so that it can be visible, it's a sign. And so it is a mixture between a positioning trademark and a color trademark because it's also the position which uh, plays a very important role. And this has been confirmed also by national courts in Italy, by the Court of Venice, for instance, very, very recently. Um, now we see another, you know, uh, how we assess the risk of confusion between two signs, which is very simple because this is a very blatant case of imitation of the double logo of the Chanel initial um, sign. So this has been um, judged by the Court of Naples as an example of the confusing similarity of uh, the, the sign. Uh, this is important concerning renewed trademark. We, we say that according to case law, European case law and national case law, renewed trademark can be protected at a larger level, with a larger scope. So the, the, the logo Louis Vuitton has been considered protected against this kind of sign because uh, people are considered to perceive immediately, uh, to, to link immediately these other sign, which is not exactly the same, to Louis Vuitton, to Louis Vuitton because of its uh, renown and its broad uh, knowledge. 
Uh, this is very nice, interesting case because now you have a new trend in fashion, especially it's uh, the parodistic use of trademarks. So parodistic use of trademarks uh, has to be very carefully considered because uh, you cannot excuse uh, the imitation of another party's trademark just because uh, you can consider it as a form of art or parody. This is not a form of art. Of art. This is just a form of commercial undue exploitation of the value of a brand. So it's been very severely sanctioned by the Italian courts. And you can see some example. Because they also use uh, trademarks which are not uh, normally used in fashion, like the Dom Perignon uh, um, particular figurative sign, which has been reproduced on T-shirts. So they use other fabulous brands to characterize uh, fashion items. Uh, this is now coming to design. You know what design is. Design is the protection of the external appearance of a product. So it refers to uh, three dimensional or bi dimensional design, but cannot refer to the functional and to the technical part of a product. This is the example how the Euro European Union guidelines define to, uh, to consider when a design is endowed with originality and individual character. So you have to take into account the field of reference of products, for instance, bags, is considered a very crowded field because you have so many different designs of bags. It's very, it's very difficult to make an innovative and an original design in bags. So field of reference. So the informed user, who is the informed user who judges your uh, level of creation. It's somebody who is um, very informed on the fashion trends, who is a sense, more sensitive, it can understand, is keen on understanding the different level of protection of, of you know, the new particulars. And then the degree of liberty of the creator. So the creator uh, is not a very big uh, liberty in this field because it's very overcrowded. So any new particular has to be taken into account and considered original. And then the comparison between the, the, you know, the state of the art and the design, uh, the design and tool. This is the HM case, for, for instance. Then this is a, an example of how design is, can be imitated. These are some textile, design of a textile made by Blue Marine, which is a, an important Italian designer, which have been copied and have considered uh, as infringed by the court of Turing. This is another example, is the famous Jean-Paul Gaultier Flamingo, which has been copied on, uh, on, uh, on, um, you know, on a T-shirt and on, uh, on uh, different articles of uh, fashion and has been considered infringed by the court of Bologna. And this is important to know because uh, here, uh, the Flamingo was not protected with a, design, with a registered design, but just with uh, uh, a copyright. So how could Jean-Paul Gaultier prove uh, his copyright? It just because he, he filed an envelope solo in France, and that is, uh, uh, they, he, he, filed, uh, uh, he went to see a notary, and he asked this notary to say that this, this was his date of creation of this kind of product, and he, he, he left with the notary the, the copy of his design and so And so this was useful to prove before the court of Bologna, although this has been happening in France, that he, uh, he, he was the first, uh, sorry, he was the first creator of this kind of, uh, of uh, flamingo. So this was very important, as I said to you before, that for the copyright you have to prove your creation date. And this is another um, case, uh, very interesting, uh, for these uh, diesel jeans, which have been imitated by Zara in the design of their pocket and the zip put on the pockets. And the court of Milan recognized the infringement of this design and granted a pan-European injunction. That is that Zara was inhibited to sell the, the imitating item not only in Italy, but overall Europe. Another kind, another example of a very fashionable design uh, is that uh, which uh, see um, Louboutin, which has uh, uh, made some new design. You can see these on uh, on the. Um, 
on the right side, and then the uh, limiting uh, collection by the uh, by the Renzi designer, who has been also sanctioned by the court of Milan as a copy, a lavish copy of the, the of the Louboutin design. We and inhibited to sell its products uh, on a European level, not only in Italy but all throughout Europe. And this is interesting because the 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 infringer was selling and offering to sell. Uh, its copies on the platforms. And so it was inhibited to sell it throughout uh, Europe on the platform and physically. And this is uh, another good example of how you can accumulate design and copyright. It's the famous Monboot case, which has been recognized as endowed of creativity by the Court of Milan. So not only protected under a design perspective, but also under a copyright perspective. Because uh, uh, Monboot was also exposed at the Louvre. And this is an example of uh, imitation of a textile, a Fendi textile orchidea, by another fashion uh, company, which is Biroglio, an Italian company. Normally, he's a very big company, but in this, kind, this, uh, this time, he fell on the imitation on a famous uh, <laughs> creation, and he was sanctioned. Um, yeah, so how, now just a brief uh, um, outline how, you, how the design can build up their relationship with the company. So you know that designer normally conclude agreements for the exploitation of their creation with uh, companies. So what is important to, to bear in mind is that normally uh, while concluding this kind of agreements, the designer uh, assigns uh, its patrimonial rights to the company, but the designer keeps the moral rights, what is that he can always be mentioned at the designer. He has the right to have his name always put on the creation, so designed by. And also, if the company wants to register the design, the company can register the design in its name, but it can appoint the designer as moral inventor, as moral creator and can have the name also put on it. And then it's important that you can uh, good, uh, well negotiate the royalties for the assignment of your patrimonial rights, or designer. The range is comprised between three and 7% according to the level of the design. On the, on, you know, it depends on the field of reference and everything. And then the exclusivity, that is that the company shall uh, use your design and you um, uh, have to, 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 to link your design to this company not to grant the same design to other companies, otherwise it goes down in its uh, exclusivity. And the non-competing clause, that means that the company shall not uh, um, create a design which is likely to infringe your original design, that is the company shall respect the feature of your design and vice versa. And also the integrity of the design and work, that is the company shall not um, make some amendments that are likely to distort the original creation. Um, now, some example of patents. You see that pa you can have a product patent and process patent. Product patent, an example is, for instance, the waterproof sole of Geox, very important uh, innovation. <laughs> and processing uh, proceeding patents, process patents, that is when you can work out a particular process. So for instance, this is a, a, a process to um, decorate textile and to dry bleaching the textile in order to make uh, it lighter in color, for especially used for jeans. Mm. Uh, this is an example of case study. So you can have also uh, a sweater. We can be subjected to these proceedings. And you can bleach some uh, external parts and not internal parts, and vice versa. You can choose. This is a particular technique. So you can have some parts which are clearer than the other. This is another case study on patents. 
So this, the Milan court uh, uh, considered this case because Basmara has uh, filed a patent in order uh, to protect the perfect fit genes. That is a genes which can uh, make your, uh, your shape better, more fit. And so it was very fashionable. And uh, of course, uh, the, the other party, uh, the, the Germani company, it is, a, it is a mistake, sorry, it's a, an Italian company called Germani. The Germani Italian company has imitated this particular um, process and patent, which consists in the sewing and cutting and putting together the part of the pocket of your jigs in order to make your shape fit. And so the court of Milano considered that was a very blatant infringement of this patent and that this patent was new and out of inventive step because in the general panorama of the prior art, there was nothing before which could solve this technical problem. Then we can speak of intelligent textile. We have heard very much this morning on these. And there is some example of Google, which has made uh, you know, an intelligent uh, textile and it is uh, capable of uh, um, put uh, the textile fiber with uh, electronic fiber and to make interactive you know, and with just a gesture. And this is, you can put this wearable, uh, interactive, uh, coupling it with wired or wireless uh, circuit. So it's, very, it's a very blatant example of a new interaction between textile fabric and uh, technological uh, circuit. Uh, these are intelligent, uh, you know, patented textile. Um, of course, uh, when we speak of, uh, of uh, intelligent textile, we have to bear in mind that uh, the protection of this kind of patents is very difficult to be obtained because sometimes uh, electronic circuits have already been very much exploited. So you need to, to be original and, uh, to, to, and what the European um, Office uh, for the Patents considered to be uh, protectable is that when there is a real new complementary effect. So something which is very striking with respect to the prior art, because otherwise everything now is quite generalized. So if you have, for instance, a smart T-shirt which is able to capture your, your cardiac rhythm, this has been considered protected and can be likely to be protected as a, a, a smart patent. So it's very important to understand which is uh, the, you know, the border for the protection and not protection of this kind of tools. And to conclude, uh, just a short word on um, savoir faire and know-how. So you have to distinguish, according to the European Directive, three kinds of know-how. So it's uh, industrial know-how, technological know-how, commercial and promotional know-how. All of these make your strategic know-how. So technological know-how is what is really technical and scientific. You can apply, for instance, to a manufacturing process to manufacture a new textile, for instance, also an intelligent textile. This is all technological know-how when you cannot uh, obtain a patent, but you have a know-how and you can obtain a new product which is a technological advanced. Then you have your commercial know-how, which uh, uh, relies uh, to, uh, you know, efficient, efficient management of firm, the promotional know-how, which, which concerns marketing tools, uh, list of clients, uh, advertising technique. This is all commercial and promotional know-how. All together, they uh, make the, the strategic know-how of a firm, of an undertaking and can be protected. This is an example. Uh, so, of course, uh, to be uh, protected, uh, trade secrets, according to the European Directive, shall be se keep secret that is not accessible to everybody. They shall have an economic value, so uh, have a business value, and uh, shall be protected. That is, that uh, the undertaking shall... Uh, um, in, shall identify some measures, internal measures, to protect your know-how. That is, for instance, using the password for identify your process. Not let every employee have a set, free access to this uh, uh, know-how. So to have some, you know, to take the reasonable step to make this uh, know-how 
remain secret and only accessible to some people, dedicated technicians of the, of the undertaking. This is an example of uh, application to fashion industry of uh, uh, proceeding, which is a, the, a trace, a secret uh, proceeding. That is the realization of tissues and the finishing of articles. For instance, f uh, exploiting the flower drying process, depending on the moon at a certain temperature, with the use of fish gelatin, and they make flowers. This has been used, for instance, by Dior in their decoration. Um, yeah, and very important to protect, well, which is the contractual tool we use to protect uh, uh, trade seekers. Normally, we use the so-called uh, non-disclosure agreement or confidential agreement. And so no, it's very important when you want to, um, to bargain and uh, to, you want to, to, to give your know-how to another undertaking and you want to, to, to let your know-how be exploited, to sign a confidentiality agreement in order that your know-how remains secret. So very important to understand why, uh, which is the purpose of using your confidential information just for making the product. For instance, if I have created this process for Dior, I have to sign a confidential agreement with Dior, just making sure that Dior uses uh, this information just for the purpose we have agreed together. And also put uh, um, an end uh, to this confidential agreement, so the duration is very important, to make also a clause of non-competition, that is for five years after the, um, the, the termination of the agreement, you have to keep the secrets, not to disclose to everybody. Hmm? And you have to put penalties in case of infringement and breach of the contract. Then, uh, to, f to really conclude, we know that in Italy we have uh, 22 specialized IP court, 11 when there is one of the party who is a foreigner, um, and uh, there are different tools to protect uh, IP assets. You have the so-called urgency proceedings, uh, which are very useful and very, very used when there is a blatant imit imitation of your IP. You can obtain a preliminary injunction order. You can also obtain the seizure of all the infringing items. And when you need to secure the, the evidence of the infringement, you can obtain the so-called description. That is, you can have access to the accountancy books, the commercial data, and you can obtain the evidence of the infringement in this way. And then you can have the action on the merits in order to recover damages. And, then the pub and also the publication of the decision, which is very important to restore the image of the, of the company who has been uh, infringed in its uh, IP assets. Thank you very much to everybody. <laughs>